And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at Mo Money, which I think some people are going to buy based on the name alone. This is a new game from Mayday Games, although this is based, the author of this did a game very similar to this about mowing people's lawns, a board game that I, I reviewed years ago. It was back in Korea. The game looked kind of like a print and play back then. This is a much better quality. This is a card game. and. It has some similarities. The theme of this, right? This is a big theme down here. I live in South Florida, and cutting grass is a year-round thing. It's very competitive. Grass grows very quickly here. Grass needs to be cut all the time. It's a big deal. It's kind of a big deal wherever it is, and you're competing with the other people. I'll cut your grass cheaper than John will. I'll do a better job of it, too. That's what this game is. In essence, this is kind of an auction game, a kind of a blind bidding auction game, a set collection style game. Here, I'll show you. In this game, you're going to be cutting the grass of several neighborhoods. You see the full complement of six neighborhoods here. That's if you're using six players. If you were using four neighborhoods, you would simply use Apple Hollow through Duck Springs. The name doesn't matter. It's simply A, B, C, D, E, and F. But this is a six player. Underneath of each of these are different contracts. You are trying to complete these contracts to get points. Each contract is worth a point. You always start with the one contract on top, but once that goes away or someone does it, then the next contract will be different. They go from one to eight. Each contract requires a certain number of bid cards. This requires two low bid cards. This requires three low bid cards with stars on them or two medium bid cards. This one requires four low bids with stars, three medium bids with stars or two high bids. This one that's worth eight only accepts a three high bid card. This one only accepts three on the low bid. And this one here, same as the other one I showed you. So you're gonna look at the different cards that are up there. And at the beginning of each player's turn, if they have any money, they have the option to spend it. You won't start with money, but you'll get it as the game goes by. You will start with a handful of bid cards that you have. Now bid cards are important. From the low pile, they're worth one to three, here two to four, here three to five. Some cards have stars on them because some bids accept only cards with stars on them and they have to be all stars. However, you can use stars to bid on things that don't have stars. Um, they also have symbols on them. These symbols are used later on for odd jobs. Players can buy more cards. The cost to buy these low bid cards is one. I know this because I start out with the sod snipper, which lets me buy low bid cards for one. Later on, I can spend $3 to build the Turf Trimmer, which lets me buy medium cards for $3. And the Gas Guzzler, which costs 6 will let me buy cards for $5. I'll be taking these cards into my hand. There's a certain limit you can have at the end of your turn, but usually you're going to be using those to bid. All players will bid simultaneously using the cards from their hand. They also have some void cards in their hand. These are used to pad out the number of bids that you have. You'll put a certain number down underneath one of the letters that matches A, B, C, D, E, and F, or whatever letters you're using, you have these cards. And everyone's gonna put them there. You have to put the exact number of cards you need, although again, you can add void cards to show the, to change the number just to mess with the other players. Once everyone's done that, you reveal them. You can only bid on two different things. If anyone has bid on an odd job, then you'll look at the cards underneath that. If those cards have three symbols, that match on the side, they will do that particular odd job. In this case, it happens to be bushes. That's gonna give them $5, but since they played it with the odd job chip, they're going to get a bonus of $3. So that'd be $8. You discard those cards and hooray. After everyone's done that, you'll start with each one of these and players will compare bids. If only one person bid for it, they discard the cards, they take the card, and they get the money shown on the cards. If multiple people did it, then the person who bid lower, undercut the other person, will get the card. They turn their cards in, get the money. The other person or people will put those cards back in their hand. So I might want to get a lot of money, $6 for one of these tricks, but someone else might put out $3. And so they're going to get, a, they're going to get the job, although they'll only get $3. Now after everyone has gotten their money and things, players will then take these cards into their hand. These cards are worth victory points. 
However, you can use them in the future to basically say, hey, I'm really good, here's a reference. And put that down with a bid. This will make your bid less, worth less. It's now, instead of this being six, it's five. So it will beat someone who put a six out. However, and I'll still get paid the full value of six. The problem with using one of these is, whether you win or lose the bid, this card is discarded. So you probably don't want to do that unless you're trying to get a really good card. And there's all sorts of cards, and there's different types of bids. One person might be bidding two of the high bid cards, and one person might be bidding three of the medium bid cards that have stars on them. And all the cards have different symbols on them that can put odd jobs together. Now, if you, do, if you get nothing, you didn't do an odd job, and you didn't win any of the bids that you were trying to go for, then you can do an odd job at the end of your turn with any cards that you've left over in your hand. However, you won't get the bonus plus three for doing it at the right time. However, if you have several of these sprinkler ones, you might get the $20 anyway. Although those symbols, the sprinkler symbols are rarer. You don't see them nearly as often. The symbols for the lower jobs um, are, are going to appear much more often. After players done that, whether a card has been bought or not, if, the, if, if no one's taken it, it goes to the bottom, and then you turn the top card of each pile over. When one of these piles is gone, the game is over. At that point, money doesn't really matter at that point. You've been using that to buy these bid cards. What matters is jobs well done. Whoever has the most points here is the winner of the game. Now, I really enjoyed Mo Money. Now, I have not played it. It says one to six, one year. Uh, I didn't play the solitaire game. But two, I've not played it with two either because this doesn't feel like a two-player game to me. But I have played it with other number of players. Three is interesting because you're kind of like, okay, they're going to do this and they're going to do this. And you're watching everybody. When you go all the way up to six, though, suddenly there's cards all over the place. Okay, this person, it's hard to keep track. So it's a bit more chaotic at six, although I think it's still fun. This game is much lighter than you'll think, right? You're trying to just win things. Now, you could bid super low, but you're not going to always want to bid low. Sure, if you go low, you'll get the card, but then you'll have almost no money, which gives you nothing to bid with in the future. I might win this for $2, which gives me $2, and I get two bidding cards, which may or may not allow me to bid on anything else next round, while someone who bids higher may, will not win often. So you got to kind of find that balance or think, no one's going to go for that. Here's my chance. Give me that. And when do you do those odd jobs? Odd jobs can get you money, but you're wasting valuable cards to get that money. I find the whole thing is really kind of fascinating, especially when you use those medium and high bid cards to get the odd jobs, because it's like, ah, oh, can't believe I'm wasting this on an odd job. Oh, such a pain in the neck. I really found the game to be fun, fast, and interesting. The artwork I liked, it has a look of almost the same artwork as For Sale did. I don't know if it's the same artist or not, but it's just, it kind of, it's, it's green. My one complaint about components, I don't like that the $1 and $5 bills are the same color. Sure, that's thematic in the U.S., but the U.S. needs to change that. I like where they are different colors, and it would have been easier in this game to sort them out and just see how much money you're getting since the money is being passed around often. The game also has, I didn't show you, a very cool first player, starting player marker, which breaks ties in case there's a, a tie in an auction. There's not a lot, you know, really more to say about the game. It's simply just saying, ooh, which cards am I going to buy? You want to get those medium and high cards? I think you can win without buying the Grass Guzzler lawnmower, just going for medium bid cards. I haven't seen anyone do that yet, but I think you can. I think people are just, you know, they're always in thrall with that, oh, more power, ho, 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 you know, type thing of getting the bigger lawnmowers. But just having all the different cards and trying to figure out when to use the medium ones, when to use the high ones, it works together in a very streamlined style game. The box says 45 minutes. I feel that's accurate. Um, with fewer players, you can probably get it down to 30 minutes. So it's a little bit more than a filler, but it feels light and yet isn't engaging enough and gives you enough options. Pretty fun game. And I certainly think the theme is something different. Finally, Mo Money. Oh, yeah. You'll probably like that name, too. Dice Tower Judgment approved. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Boo! Boo!